Namaste and welcome. So the title of the class is The Empty Pot. But before I begin, I will offer my obeisances to my spiritual master, Jagat Guru Siddha Swarupananda. Namaum Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutale Srimati Siddha Swarupananda Paramahamsa Ruti Namane Bhaja Shri Krishna Shaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adoita Gadha Shri Vasudev Gobakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Around 2,500 years ago in China, there was a philosopher named Confucius. Now, he didn't teach bhakti, love of God, but rather pre-religion, encouraging qualities such as compassion, honesty and truthfulness. So here is one Confucian story titled the empty pot. That's where we get, got the name from for the whole class. Once upon a time, there lived an emperor who was growing elderly. One day, as he walked in his garden amongst all the beautiful flowers, he was considering, I have no sons. Who will be the next emperor? As he looked at the beautiful flowers growing all around him, he got an idea. As I have no sons, I will choose the next emperor from one of the children in my capital city. All the citizens of that great city were gathered and the emperor announced, I will give each child one flower seed and in one year's time, they must come back to the palace with their pot and show me the beautiful flower that they have grown. I will then choose one of these children as the next emperor. Hmm, here's his plan. Amongst the citizens was a boy named Chen who lived with his widowed mother. Chen loved to grow plants and particularly flowers. So he was quite interested when he heard the emperor announce that. Chen lined up with all the other children and he received one seed. Carefully taking it home, he planted the seed in a little clay pot and he watered it. But days passed and the little seed did not sprout. Chen moved the dirt and the seed into a big, beautiful pot. He placed the pot in the sunniest corner of his garden and he watered it with fresh water every day. Weeks passed, but still the seed did not sprout. Chen was bewildered. This had never happened before. He gently took his little pet cricket and sat next to the pot. He wanted the seed to hear the cricket's sweet sounds, but still the little seed did not sprout. The seasons went by and a year passed and it was time to take the pot to show the emperor. Many children came to the palace and each of them had a pot with some beautiful flowers growing out of it. Chen looked sadly at his empty pot. He just had a pot of dirt. The emperor walked slowly past all the children with their pots of flowers. And the emperor looked incredibly sad. Finally, he stood in front of Chen. What is this? demanded the emperor. Why is your pot empty? Chen quietly replied, I'm sorry. I put the seed in the pot. I made sure the seed was given fresh water and sunlight. But no matter what I did, it wouldn't grow. I tried my best. 
To everybody's surprise, the emperor announced, those seeds I gave everyone were boiled and there was no way they could sprout. This child tried his best and importantly, he was honest. Here is your next emperor. <laughs> so this start title of the story was The Empty Pot, even though it had dirt in it. But what it was devoid of was the jewel in the pot. That was the flowers that grew from the seed. So that's why it was called an empty pot. The Vaishnavas describe an empty pot as being just like a person who has not watered the seed of bhakti yoga, love for the Lord, that lays within the heart. Such a person may appear to be full and speak words of wisdom, but their words just bind us to this material world. They sing songs, they write books, they produce movies, they put on Facebook, many, many shows that they do, but their barren words are devoid of transcendental knowledge. Because the entangled living entity is busy, 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 always busy producing so much material content, he appears to be a full pot. But just like the pot filled with barren soil, in the Confucian story, is actually empty. It is the self-realized sage who is actually a full pot. It is described in scripture that such a sage is not compelled by the modes of nature. So he's not compelled by the mode of passion to be out there doing and being busy and, and speaking and communicating. He's not even compelled by the mode of goodness to be nice. He's not compelled at all by the modes of nature. He is not motivated by material desires for fame, women or wealth. None of that motivates what he does or says. He is motivated 100% by his love for the Lord and his spiritual master and he speaks for the spiritual benefit of all living entities it's that simple so that now we looked at a little story about an empty pot it's a traditional story from china let us now go to the vedic scriptures and we're going to go to the mahabharat and i will read you a story from there and it is seemingly about an empty pot. So let's begin this story. The five Pandava princes were heirs to the throne of the world. Duryodhan, their envious cousin, was always scheming how to get rid of them so that he could claim the crown for himself. Killing the Pandavas, though, proved to be very difficult for him. However, by cheating at a gambling match, Duryodhan managed to banish his cousins to the forest for 13 years. They took with them their beautiful wife, Drupadi. To assist the Pandavas during their exile, the demigod of the sun gave the eldest brother, Yudhisthira, a magical cooking pot, which held a never-ending supply of food for the Pandavas every day. Mm, that's a magical pot, isn't it? The only rule, though, there was just one rule, that once Drupadi had eaten from the pot, the magical pot would not produce any more food until the next day. When the Pandavas were in exile in the forest, they received many visits from kings, 
and sages and ministers in courts around the world who were horrified at what had happened to them. And they came to discuss matters with the Pandavas and show their support to them. With this magic cooking pot, Draupadi was able to not only feed her husbands every day, but to feed any guests who came there. So this was working out very well, wasn't it? Meanwhile, one day, Duryodhan, remember the evil cousin, Duryodhan was visited by a famous mystic yogi, Duvasa Muni. Duvasa was very quick-tempered. If ever he became angry, he would put dreadful curses on people. But if ever he was pleased, he was quick to offer benedictions as well. So he'd kind of be a bit nervous, wouldn't you, when uh, Duvasa Muni came to visit. <laughs> it's going to be one or the other that's going to happen, isn't it? On this particular visit, to Duryodhan's palace, Duvasamuni was not alone. Mm. He came there with 10,000 of his disciples. So it was not only looking after Duvasamuni now, you had to look after 10,000 disciples, feed them well, be very, um, look after them very nicely because Duvasamuni would get angry if any of his disciples were displeased. So this has really upped the ante, hasn't it? Upped the game. <laughs> Duryodhan was exceedingly careful to welcome the great yogi with the utmost care and attention. He personally made sure that whenever Duvasamuni said he was hungry, even in the middle of the night, very tasty food was brought to him. The yogi was obviously pleased with Duryodhan's service because after just a few days he said Duryodhan ask me for any benediction I'll give you whatever you desire Duryodhan was elated this was just what he wanted because he had a plan in mind but he didn't let the yogi know that his desire was for something very wicked. So innocently, he said, Ah, oh, my dear Duvasamuni, you are so kind. The only thing I would like is for my beloved cousins, the Pandavas, to have the pleasure of your company. And by good fortune, they are staying in a forest nearby. I simply desire that you go and visit them. Duvasamuni agreed to what he thought was a simple request. Duryodhan watched as the yogi and his 10,000 disciples departed. He thought to himself, hmm, the Pandavas have taken their meal already today. Now they'll never be able to feed Duvasa and all his disciples. I can't imagine what terrible curse he will cast upon them. So this was Duryodhan's plan. In the forest, the eldest Pandava, Yudhisthira, along with his brothers, greeted Duvasamuni and his disciples when they arrived at their hermitage. But quietly, Yudhisthira turned to uh, Draupadi and whispered, Quick, get your magic pot so we can offer food to them. And she said, But I've already eaten. The pot is now empty until tomorrow. Yudhisthira had to quickly think what to do. So after exchanging very polite words to the sage, he requested, My dear Duvasamuni, you have been walking for some time. Please go and bathe and relax in the river. When you return, your meal will be waiting for you. Duvasamuni and his disciples thought this a very good idea. 
So off they went to the nearby river. The Pandavas knew of Duvasamuni's reputation, of how he was easily upset and of the power of his curse. Drupadi was very worried for her husbands. From the depths of her heart, she called out to Krishna, Oh, my dear Lord, O oh, Master of the universe, please protect us. Without you, we are lost. Miraculously, Krishna appeared before her. He listened as Drupadi explained the situation. And he replied, I'm feeling hungry. Drupadi, would you please bring me some food? Bewildered, Drupadi replied, but the magic pot is empty. It won't yield any food until tomorrow. And she thought, oh, and now I can't offer you any food. And she began to weep piteously. Krishna merely smiled. Don't worry, just bring me the pot. Very puzzled, Drupadi fetched the pot and she held it up to Krishna. And he looked inside the pot and he discovered one grain of rice that was sitting under the rim of the pot. Oh, this looks delicious, he said. Taking it with his fingers, he popped it into his mouth and he said, a single grain of rice that is offered to me with love becomes the seed by which the whole universe becomes satisfied. Then Krishna turned to Bhima, who was the strongest of the Pandava brothers, and he said, take your club and go to the river and inform Duvasa and his men that their meal is now ready. Ah, so what, what is this trick of Krishna's? As Bhima approached the riverside, he saw Duvasa and the other sages standing waist deep in the water. However, they were all doing a very curious thing. They were rubbing their bellies as if they were filled with food. They were groaning and saying to each other, I feel so full. I couldn't eat anything. Devasa Muni saw Bhima standing nearby and said to his disciples, Oh no, look, here comes Bhima and he's carrying his club. If we insult him by refusing to eat what Tripadi has prepared, he will be furious. But how can we eat? We are all feeling completely satisfied. Not one of us could eat anything, no matter how delicious it is. <laughs> Duvasa's 10,000 disciples all agreed and as Bhima stepped closer to the river they all ran into the forest still wet and only half dressed. <laughs> Bhima laughed loudly at such a sight then returned to tell the other Pandava princes. <laughs> so that's uh, how Krishna had it worked out. So by the kindness of Krishna and Drupadi's devotion to him, the Pandavas were saved from one more evil plot of Duryodhan's. And they were saved basically by what looked like an empty pot, but it still contained one grain within it. So this is a wonderful story from the Mahabharat in connection with Sri Krishna, his kindness and his protection. Namaste. Jaya Jaya Radha Jaya Jaya Madhava Jaya Jaya Madhava Jaya Jaya Radha 
Jaya Jaya Madhava Jaya Jaya Madhava Jaya Jaya Radha Jaya Jaya Radha Jaya Jaya Krishna Jaya Jaya Krishna Jaya Jaya Radha Jaya Jaya Radha Jaya Jaya Krishna Jaya Jaya Krishna Jaya Jaya Krishna Jaya Jaya Krishna Jaya Jaya Radha Sham Jaya Radha Sham Jaya Jaya Vrindavan Jaya Jaya Vrindavan Jaya Jaya Radha Sham Jaya Jaya Radha Sham Jaya Jaya Vrindavan Jaya Jaya Vrindavan Jaya Jaya Jai Jai Radha Jai Jai Radha Jai Jai Krishna Jai Jai Krishna Jai Jai Radha Sham Jai Jai Radha Sham Jai Jai Vrindavan Jai Jai Vrindavan Jai Jai Radha Jai Jai Radha Jai Jai Jaya Radha Jaya 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 Krishna Jaya Jaya Krishna Jaya Jaya Radha Jaya Jaya Radha Jaya Jaya Krishna Jaya Jaya Krishna Jaya Jaya Radha Shah